was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. name above yeah and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole now let us have a little talk with Jesus let us tell him all about our troubles he will hear our faintest cry and we'll answer by and by when you feel a little prayer will turn in you know a little fire is burning you find a little talk with jesus makes it right i may have the doubts and fears hold my eyes be filled with tears but jesus is a friend who watches day and night to him in prayer he knows my every care and just a little talk with jesus makes it right and now let us have a little talk with jesus let us tell him all about our troubles he will hear our faintest cry we will answer by and by when you feel a little prayer will turn in a little fire is burning and you'll find a little talk with Jesus makes it right now let us have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about our troubles he'll hear our faintest cry and we'll answer by and by we'll give a little prayer we'll turn in and you know a little fire is burning You'll find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. I said, you'll find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. One more time. Yes, you'll find a little talk with Jesus makes everything all right. <laughs> Just a little talk with Amen. Jesus. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? Just Amen. a talk. Just a little talk with him. That's That'll right. That turned my life around. Amen. Every Praise time. Praise the Lord. Praise ah, the Lord. Ah, wonderful. Welcome to uh, just the time around the piano with Ryan and Tim. Uh, thank you for joining us. We're just going to sing some songs that make us uh, rejoice. Um, it's so uh, that's all. You know, we, we need a little rejoicing. We need some uplifting. Every We're day. living in interesting times. <laughs> oh, and, yeah, uh, for sure. To sing praises to the Lord any time we have that opportunity, we should take it. Absolutely. Yeah. You know what? We really have to make the opportunity to do That's that. Right. 
because we have something to rejoice about every That's day. Right. We, all we have to do is open the Word of God, and He has given us plenty to <laughs> rejoice about. That's right. right. Um, That's so right. I, I don't ever want to uh, miss an opportunity to thank Him and praise Him and glorify Him. So, so we're just going to do that. Um, don't be offended by anything we uh, do. That's not our intent. Uh, we are here to just rejoice and love on Jesus mm -hmm. the way that... I was raised to do it, that's right. um, and just to... What would we do have... without Him, right? Amen, right? That's <laughs> In fact, right. that's what we're going to sing about Why right now, we do without that, Him. Right? Without Him, I could do nothing. Without Him, I truly fail. And without Him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Without Him, I would be dying, and without Him, I'd be enslaved, and without Without Jesus, uh, without the blood that he shed for us, um, we would truly, uh, we would we'd be without hope. So I would be um, without hope. Absolutely. So I am grateful for the blood of Jesus. And I um, love the scripture in 1 Peter 1, verses 18 and 19, that says, For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. So I like this song that says, I claim the blood. I 
I have a source of strength when I am weak that takes me through when life is pressing me I have a source of power from above I'm covered over by a shield of love and I claim the blood Jesus shed on Calvary those precious blood stains were made there just for me for all my sins my sickness and my pain when I need healing I claim those precious blood stains I do not know how others make it through who never go to Calvary as I do for there a healing cleansing stream still flows with peace that only his redeemed can shed on Calvary those precious blood stains were made there just for me for all my sins my sickness and my pain with I need healing I claim those precious blood stains for all my sins my sickness and my pain when I need healing I claim those precious blood stay. Hmm. I had talked to you briefly as we were preparing for this program, and uh, yeah, thank you. You know, my my mother, um, the very last song she ever sang. As she was laying in the hospital bed uh, the day before she went into ICU. She sang this song, and I remember her telling me about it, and she said, can you play it for me? And so I played uh, the, the hymn pill singing it, and she just lifted her hands in the hospital, and she was worshiping the Lord in her closing moments. And uh, it's a beautiful song, and it's so fitting. Yeah, it's we sweet. can claim the blood. Amen. As she did in her dying moments. Yeah. We can claim the blood now. Amen. Because it is a precious blood stain. Thank you, Lord. Amen. What a what a wonderful plan of redemption that our Father has for us. And um, that kind of leads me to this song. Um, for those who can't grasp the concept or or haven't even given Christ a thought, his plan for their life. Um, this song says, pity the man. Um, Mark 8, 34 through 37 says, whoever desires Jesus sayings, 
whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's will, uh, will save it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Mm, powerful. Um, or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? So I guess we should pity the man in this world who must use the earth for a bed. And I guess we should pity the man who must toil from dawn till dusk for his bread. But these can be rich if they have contentment and share in God's salvation's plan. But if you know any who, though they have plenty, are lost, then pity the man. Pity the man who has treasures to hold and owns not the pearl of great price. Pity the man, though he lives long on earth, yet he knows not the giver of life. Doctor or lawyer, traveler or merchant, builder who builds on the sand. Pauper or king, to be saved is the thing. If he's lost, then pity the man. And I guess there are those who pity the saved as though we were missing life's best. They're forgetting the treasures of earth pass away, and heaven is the place to invest. They're meanwhile esteeming the man who is scheming to hold all the wealth that he can. But if while he is living, to God he's not giving his soul, then pity the man. Oh, pity the man who has treasures to hold and owns not the pearl of great price. Pity the man, though he lives long on earth, yet he knows not the giver of life. Doctor, lawyer, traveler, or merchant, builder who builds on the sand, pauper or king, to be saved is the thing. Oh, if he's lost, then pity the man. A pauper or a king, to be saved is the thing. If he's lost, then I pity the man. Praise the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, as you were talking about that, the passage of Scripture came to my mind. is in Matthew 25 where Jesus is talking about ministering to those in need, mm -hmm. those who are sick, you know, those who are oppressed, those who are in prison. Right. Uh, you know, Jesus says, if you've done this for the least of these and you've done this for me. Mm -hmm. And there are so many people in the world today that choose not to to serve God or to identify as Christian or to be a Christian because of, well, the lack of a Christ-like attitude and the lack of Christ-likeness from those who profess him, right? Right. And right. I think it's Paul that says it very clearly. He says that, you know, he was given a prophecy and he was shown the end times and he saw, he makes this long list. Um, I think it's in the book of 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians. He makes this long list, and he basically, uh, or it's actually 1 Tim, First or 2 Timothy, I think it is. But he makes this long list of all these different characteristics of people who are living in sin, disobedient to parents and haughty and, you know, prideful right. and uplifting, all these things. But then he says something toward the end. He, he lists them, and he says, having a form of godliness, wow, but denying its power. And that strict scripture has always stuck with me because I don't want to be that person. No, no, I don't no. want to seem like a whitewashed tomb on the outside, kind of like right. the Pharisees, as Jesus called them, hypocrites. Yeah. 
And, you know, I want a real experience with God. Right. And I want him to make it real for me because yeah. we know that we can't do anything in and of ourselves to gain a salvation. Right. We just simply surrender. But um, yeah. the song that I, I would like to sing at this time, it tells that testimony. A person who wrote this song was pouring their heart out to the Lord saying, God, give me a real experience. Make it real. I want to feel you. I want to know you're there. And, you know, all these people around us seem to have masks on and they're playing a role or, you know, they're, they're saying good things, but yet you know that the fruits of the Spirit are not really there. Right. So make it real, Lord. That's what this song says. I've seen a lot of crazy things done in your name. I know the tricks behind the magic show I've almost thrown the towel in a time or two and walked away from everything I know but I can't feel this emptiness inside of me or calm the troubled waters of my mind. So if you're really out there and you're listening, then prove to me that those who seek will find. If you can just see fit to show me some of who you are, if you can shed some light into this broken sinner's heart, I need to know the truth and I need something I can feel. I need you. to make it real. There must be some good reason why you brought me here through the valleys where the shadows Hover close Down here there's a mask To cover every face It's your sweet face I long to see the most So if you think There's just the slightest Hope for me In spite of all questions and my doubts then let me hear your still small voice speak out my name and let me know what others talk about if you can just see fit to show me some of who you are shed some light into this broken sinner's heart I need to know the truth and I need something I can feel I need you to make it real I need something I can feel. I need you Lord to make it real. Make it real. good you know it's it's powerful because 
that type of message is not a message that someone from Laodicea would sing. Mm -hmm. Because when you read in the scripture, in Revelation chapter 3, Jesus obviously, he sends all these different messages in Revelation 1, 2, and 3 through the seven churches of Asia. And we know that the last church age is Laodicea. We believe that that's the church age we're living in, right? We're Laodicean. And Jesus gives a very strong rebuke to Laodicea. And he counsels them to buy from him gold tried in the fire and white garments that they may be clothed, that the shame of their nakedness may be clothed upon. And of course, eye salve that they can see. But he tells them before he delivers that counsel, he says, you know, you, you, you think that you're rich in abundance and need of nothing, but yet you're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Mm. And in each one, it, to, to, to each one of the churches, he says, I know your works. But to Laodicea, he says, I wish that you were cold or hot. Wow. Because if you were cold or hot, I can work with that, right? Mm -hmm, he right, says, but right. you're lukewarm. And, and you know, mm -hmm. Jesus says, you make me want to, and the New King James Version actually uses the word vomit. Right. You make me want to vomit you. King James Version says, spew you out of my mouth because that, that type of lukewarm condition right. makes Jesus sick, right? Right. And it's just powerful because when you connect that to the message that he gave to Ephesus, um, the one thing he commended Ephesus for um, is, you know, he gave them all, there are many nice things, but one thing that he did not commend them for is he said, you have lost your first mm. love, right? Right, right? You've lost that red hotness, right? That, right. That, yes. We want to be on fire for God. You know, God says, I wish that you were cold or hot. We don't necessarily want to be cold, but in a cold state, he can work with us, right? right. Because <laughs> when you're cold, you're uncomfortable. You desire to be warm. Yeah. And when you're hot, you're cold, you, you know, you desire to be cool. Yeah. But we want to be on fire for God. And there was a song <laughs> that me and my family used to sing growing up. It's a fun song to sing, written by Carol Magruder. Mm -hmm. and it's called Red Hot Desire. And then and the message of this song is exactly that. It's the, the you know, Carol Magruder's pouring his heart out in this, in this song and he's saying, you know, I want that old fashioned red hot desire. You know, that first love, right? I want that first love. I want to be on fire for the Lord. And uh, I'm going to sing it for you right now. It's a, it's, a, it's a fun song to sing. I want that old fashioned red hot desire. Sing it now. <laughs> I want that old-fashioned red-hot desire The kind that sets my spirit free, sets my soul on fire I want it to affect my life when I go to God in prayer I want that tried and proven old-fashioned red-hot desire I'm weary of that cold and weary feeling Sing it now. The lethargy I feel when I am kneeling Feel God's holy power. I want that old fashioned red hot desire. I want that old fashioned red hot desire. The kind that sets my spirit free, sets my soul on fire. I want it to affect my life when I go to God in prayer. I want that tried and proven old fashioned red hot desire. Like I have been robbed My Christian life is more than just a job Come on now. Lord, plant me on the rock, not in the mire Give me that old-fashioned red-hot desire I want that old-fashioned red-hot desire The kind that sets my spirit free, sets my soul on fire Wanted to affect my life when I go to God in prayer. I want that tried and proven, old fashioned red hot desire. I want that old fashioned red hot desire. The kind that sets my spirit free, sets my soul on fire. I want it to affect my life when I go to God in prayer. I want that tried and proven, old fashioned red hot desire. That's the only kind to have. That's right. <laughs> Old right. Red hot desire. Like it. <laughs> well, there's nothing more exciting to see somebody who is sold out. Absolutely. In, in, in whatever they do, you know. I mean, I, it's, I am probably a, the worst salesman in the world. I'm the person that knocks on your door and said, uh, you wouldn't want to buy something like this, would you? You know, you're not interested right. in this, are you? 
But no, I love that. I love mm-hmm. uh, uh, that. What are the? What's the word again? The, the that phrase of the. I want a. Uh, what's the last line? I want a. I want a tried and proven. Tried because and again, proven. go back to Laodicea. Jesus says, "I counsel you to buy from me gold tried in the fire." Right. You know, right. sometimes we have to walk through the heat, and and, and be tried and and really fashioned in that. Pure, oh, sure. perfect, gold-like faith in order for us to be proven, right? right, right. And that's why it says, I want to be, I want that tried and proven, old-fashioned nice. red-hot desire. <laughs> I love Amen. That. I like it. <laughs> I do, too. I like that a whole lot. So, uh, <laughs> so we're going to go from, um, from that to um, something... Uh, uh, no flow here. Um, and so, sorry about this, but, no, but brother, take I, it away. I'm all sold on that. Um, <laughs> so uh, I want to talk about a, a, a song that I enjoy um, about uh, angels. Right. And um, so there's a, a, a scripture in Psalm 91, verses 9 through 12. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall uh, befa- befall mm-hmm. you. I'm reading without my glasses, and they're sitting right here over here, so I don't know why. (laughs) But anyway, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In uh, in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And um, I love the uh, story about Elisha Mm -hmm. in 2 Kings, um, where he he saw the, the angels standing in on his, um, ready to fight for him. And so this is a a great song um, reminding us that we have angels. In fact, you know, uh, well, well, I'll I'll just sing the song and then then we may talk about it if we have, if we have time. We will talk about it. (laughs) Anyway. um. In a world full of trouble, we travel along. God is our Father, we're on our way home. If forces of evil ever close in on you, oh, Jesus has promised this is what he will do. Put angels all around you to keep you from harm to guide and direct you till you're safe in his arms with angels all around you you're never alone and you'll be protected till you make it home now here's that story i was talking about in second kings the prophet elijah in the bible we're told approached by an army just stood there so bold cause he heard God whisper fear not my son just look toward the heaven see what I have done I put angels all around you to keep you from harm to guide and direct you till you're safe in his arms with angels all around you you're never alone and you'll be protected till you make it home oh yeah i've got angels all around me to keep me from harm to guide and direct me I'm safe in his arms and with angels all around me I am never alone and I'll be protected till I make it home yep <laughs> I love me song. some angels <laughs> <laughs> yeah man and it's true right? you know yeah. you know, we 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 are engaged in a great controversy battle each day, and there's right, there right. are spiritual battles going on all around us that we don't even we can't even fathom, right? right, right. And I, I'm glad that you reference, and also the song references the, the story in Second Kings. Um, that's a powerful story. Boy, it is. And it, it also is. shows the faith that Elijah had. That God, God, he had so much faith that God had dialed in his spiritual vision right. to be able to see what many other people couldn't. Yeah. 
angels all around us. That's awesome. That's good. That's good. <laughs> uh, that's fun. Very fun. So, um, yeah, uh, uh, let's let's sing another one. Let's sing another one. <laughs> <laughs> I love this next one. Yeah. This is a this is one that uh, I learned years ago. I think this is probably the first time I've ever actually sing it though. Um, but it, the song is titled "On the Authority." And I love it because it's talking about the power and the authority of the Word of God. Right. That it's not just some, you know, some fairy tale story. It's not just a book of history. It's not just a book of literature. And some people see it even as a as a book of philosophy. Mm-hmm. And, and while it may have certain elements of all of those things in it, it's much more than that. It's the it's the powerful Word of God. Yeah. Um, it was by the Word of God that worlds were built. Right. right. The world Word of God that man was built, and it's just powerful that. You know, on the authority of the word of God, we can stand and rise up and take our stand on God's word because we know that it is sure and it's the most sure thing. I think God's word says, you know, this all this world and everything will pass away, but the word of God will always be everlasting. So on the authority, we'll see if we can do this right. Never sing it before. We'll go. (laughs) Okay, remember this little intro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's try this little intro so we can get it right. Okay. So many years. Let's try that again. Yeah, okay, that, was, that was a little. That was a little. That was so many years. Yeah, we're gonna do that a little. <laughs> that bit, didn't sound that authoritative. Did, that was did not it? authoritative. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta, we gotta put our big man boots on for this okay. one. Let's I do got that mine again. on, friend. My socks too. Okay. okay. So many years I cried, cause my soul denied that he would save a wretch like me. So full of gloom and dread that I hung my head I wouldn't claim the victory then one day his love like a wing dove settled down upon my life and then I realized he had authorized my ticket to paradise on the authority of the Holy Word I'll rise up and take my stand. Oh, sounds good. I'm a blood bought child of the living God, who is the great I am. I'm an heir to all that heaven holds, and no principality can ever take away my royal crown, given on his authority. It's a mystery why he came to me, why he would choose me for his home, why he pulled me out of the lake of doubt and set me right beside his throne, why he guaranteed with his sealed decree my inheritance by right. I'm his favorite child. Come on now. That Makes me smile, I'm the center of his delight. The authority of the holy word, I'll rise up and take my stand. I'm a blood-bought child of the living God, who is the great I am. I'm in heir to all that heaven holds, and no principle. Can ever take away my royal crown, given on his authority. On the authority of the holy word, I rise up and take my stand. I'm a blood bought child of the living God, who is the great. Authority. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. 
Not bad for the first oh, time. I love it. Yeah. Very authoritative. <laughs> Praise the, the Lord. The Word of God is authoritative, Oh, my man. goodness. The B-I-B-L-E. I stand upon <laughs> the Word of God. Hey man, That's I love awesome. It. I love it. Yeah, you know, I love and, it. and, you know, simple songs like, you know, we've done this one on the program before. We don't have to do it today. But, you know, you know song, simple songs like Jesus Loves Me. Why? Jesus Loves Me. This I know why. For the Bible. For the Bible tells me right. so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get a kick out of um, people who, like secular interviewers, you go, go mm. on, a, you have a Christian pe person being interviewed, and um, the interviewer will ask a question, and the uh, the Christian will re respond something from the Bible, and it just like it almost frustrates the interviewer right. because they don't know how to respond to that. You know, it's right. just otherworldly to them. Right, yeah, absolutely. Hello. And so um, anyway, so I, I think that it's w wonderful that we as believers have the Word of God. Absolutely. So why wouldn't we stand on that authority? Absolutely. Claim those promises, claim everything, and then live by the, the commandments. Absolutely. The whole, the whole kit and caboodle, we need to follow the Word of God. That's right. It's and it, but it takes a lot of faith. It really, well, really absolutely does. It takes it a lot does. of faith. You know, and when I say a lot of faith, you know, I make it sound like impossible. You know, faith isn't impossible. No. But it does take a lot of faith to be able to put your, your faith, your trust into something that, you know, to many people doesn't seem real. It's just words on a page. It's just... Right messages or stories, you know, um, but when you've had a personal encounter, <laughs> and this is where I get excited because that actually helps me set up my next song here. <laughs> Good. Woo! You know, when you've had a personal experience with God, the God of the Bible that you read about, that it's not just some fairy tale story, that there really was a man named Jesus who yeah. came from heaven, walked to this earth, and there's so many thousands of historical documents that exist from that time afterwards that confirm that Jesus was a real person. Mm -hmm. Eyewitness accounts, thousands of repetitive stories that tell about how this same Jesus was murdered, mm -hmm. put to death, dead for three days nearly, right. and then was resurrected from a tomb and hundreds of people saw him. It's not just some fairy tale story, but it's something you can trust. It's real. And then when you have a personal experience with this Jesus. Yeah, right. <sighs> Come on now. You know, we all have a story. You have a story. Yeah. I have a story. You know, I, I may not have you know, come to Jesus in a cave or came out right. of some you know, <laughs> deep, dark, you know, satanic agency or witchcraft or right. all these all of those are powerful stories sure, and people have sure, those real absolutely. stories. Yeah. You know, but Dynamic. me, you know, I, I was kind of in a more dangerous situation. Mm. I was raised in the church, right. was deceived for many years believing that I knew God when I really didn't. Mm. And when I come to really have a personal experience with Christ, I found out that I had been praising the Lord mm -hmm. from within the mire, from wow. within the dung hill, as Paul mm -hmm. would say, sure. you know. Yep. And Christ is, you know, I'm inside. It's like I was inside this prison, and I'm praising God from inside this prison mm -hmm. cell because I'm, pr I'm thankful that God has broken the chains so that I can walk free within the prison cell. <laughs> but Jesus is like, man, I died for much more than just those chains inside those prison cells. Check the door. Why don't you walk out of that prison cell? Why don't you be free? God wants to make us new. He wants to make us a new creature. And that's what I love about this song. My, my dad sing this song growing up. My mom and dad would sing it. And even as a child who that didn't really fully understand the gospel, this, the message of this song always stuck out to me because it's entitled Better Than New. Uh, it talks about how the world rejected me. Um, I was used up. I wasn't anything. But God, you reached down and you picked me up and you pulled me out <laughs> and you made me better than new. Oh, world they all rejected me cause I was used up there wasn't anything left to drink from my empty cup they cast me aside and I laid broken till I Picked me up and with your strong and loving hand, 
You made my life better than new, better than new. the Lord. Mm. I was born into a life of sin, locked in its trance. I was hypnotized, mesmerized. I hadn't a chance. You see my soul, it cried out for mercy. But there dark skies my eyes met your eyes and you made me better than new is better than new, brother. Yeah, he does. He does. He does. He does. And that's that's uh, interesting um, because e even even in, as he makes us better than new, um, we are we are still human, and um, we still mess up. You know, and so it doesn't. He doesn't make us uh, perfect. That's right. Um, but um, so better than new is a is a really great phrase, um, <laughs> which is which is better than new, and the world looks at it weird as right. well. It if it's better than new, then how can it not be perfect? Right. Well, um, just well, it's probably perfect in his eyes, right? <laughs> in our <laughs> eyes, we're gonna look at each other and ourselves and be like, man, none of us right. can be perfect. Well, it's right. in the flesh. Right. The flesh, the, the cannot, flesh be perfect, cannot be perfect, but God right. can take anything, right? Right. He can take that. You know, there's a there's a scripture over in Malachi that says. That he's like a refiner. He's he, he he's like a refiner's fire, right? Right. Yeah. He, he's he, he he's like a launderer's soap. Yeah. He cleanses us, and then uh, I think it's Malachi chapter three, verses two and three, somewhere in there. It's awesome. And then and then he said, and then it says that he's like a, a a refiner of silver. And if you know the process of how silver making works, it's powerful. So the the silversmith has to take this ugly piece of kind of rough looking silver and he holds it in the hottest part of the flame wow. right yeah he does now keep in mind <laughs> he is he is a refiner of silver right he holds it in the hottest part of the flame what does that tell us sometimes sometimes we have to walk through the fiery trials of life and james says we should count it all joy when we fall into various trials right it's like you know you're driving down the road and you get that that uh that flat tire, you know, how, who's going to pull over and be like, God, praise you, Lord, for that flat tire, you know? But, you know, these different trials, they, the Bible says they build patience, it builds character. And so he sets and he holds us in that hottest part of the flame. 
And you might ask, well, how do you know when it's ready, right? Well, a, a good silversmith will hold it just long enough to never take his eyes off of it because just a little too long and you'll, it'll burn, it'll scorch. But he heard, holds it just in the fire, just long enough until he can see his reflection. Nice. <laughs> until he can see his reflection in that piece of silver. He is a refiner. Uh, he is a refiner's fire. He is, he, he is the launderer's soap, and he will make us better than new. Yeah, he will. And he's working on us, right? He is working on us. <laughs> he's working on all of us. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it took him only um, those, those seven days, six days. There you go. To make the moon and the stars know, and man. the sun and the earth. And I'm 50, and he's still working on me. Amen. <laughs> he's still working on me. To make me what I ought to be It took him just a week To make the moon and the stars The sun and the earth And Jupiter and Mars How loving and patient he must be He's still working on me There really ought to be A sign upon my heart don't judge me yet, there's an unfinished part. But I'll be perfect just according to his plan, fashioned by the master's loving hands. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be, cause he's still working on me. <laughs> In the mirror of his word, reflections that I see, it makes me wonder why he never gave up on me. But he loves me as I am and helps me when I pray. Remember, he's the potter, I'm the clay. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. Oh, he's still working on me. Oh, he's still working on me and you to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be. Oh, he's still working on me. Yes, he's still working on me. I remember I used to sing that song as a kid, and I thought that was just a fun little song. And the older I get, the more like, Lord, this That's is right. serious. <laughs> this is a real song. <laughs> this is not just a kid's song. Oh, you oh got my that right, goodness. Man. He is working on me, and um, I am so grateful. Thank you, Lord, that you are working on me. Amen. Thank you. I'll second that. Yeah, mm -hmm. right? Um, I just want to, let's just do one more tune and sing along with me if you want sure. to. Please do. I love it. And so um, this is a song right out of um, Matthew 6, 25 through 30, talking about um, why, asking why do we worry? You know, when we consider uh, the lilies and the sparrow and how God provides for them. Right. And um, this song is is just sweet. Beautiful. It's an, it's, an old, it's another old song. Uh, I've, I've been singing a lot of Joel Hemphill songs. Right. Yeah. And um, so this is just a, a, a sweet one. And this is something for you to consider. Consider the lilies. They don't toil nor spin. But there's not a king with more splendor than them. Consider the sparrows, they don't plant nor sow, but they're fed by the master who watches them grow. We have a heavenly Father full 
of mercy and a heart full of love. He really cares when your head is bowed low. Consider the lilies and then to this friend of mine who hangs out the stars and tells that sun when to shine and he kisses the flowers each morning with dew but he's never too busy to care about you we have a heavenly father above with eyes full of mercy and a heart full of love he really cares when your head is bowed low consider the lilies and then you will know consider the lilies and then Your heavenly Father watches over you. He cares about you. All he he loves to hear you sing. He sing his praises. So thank you for singing along with us. We appreciate it. Come back another time. We'll do this again, Ryan. Yeah, let's do it again. Ryan Day. Thank you. I <laughs> thank love you, brother. You, brother. Thanks a lot. You. Good times.